All right, so I made some new adjustments to the office yet again. I've made like like three or four different set of videos now on this channel. Well, maybe not this channel, but on all of my channels, I made so many like setup videos showcasing the upgrade process of my setup over the last like couple of years here and there. But now I've made one of the biggest adjustments to my setup and we're gonna talk about it today. So one of the biggest new changes to my office is the introduction of a full work PC. I upgraded my very first gaming PC that I got in, I think 2019, like, or was it 2018? It might have been 2018 actually. I have to look at the Amazon listing, but I'm pretty certain I bought it in 2018. It was a pre-built like HB computer. It was considered a gaming PC. I think it had like a 1050 in it with some weird Intel like CPU. It wasn't that great. It only had a hard drive that I eventually upgraded to an SSD. But basically I took all those parts and put them in a brand new case. Now as for the upgrades that I made to, to turn into a full-time work PC, well, I got the same motherboard that I have in my gaming PC, which is a 570X Asus Tough motherboard. I took my old 1660 Ti GPU and my old AMD Ryzen 5 3600 CPU, and I took the old RAM from my old build, which was DDR4 RAM. I was able to like put it with that old motherboard and actually work. But I took that RAM, took that motherboard, GPU, CPU combo, and put them all in the NZXT case that I mentioned earlier and turn it into a work PC for video editing and a few other things. Now, I still need to get more RAM for the computer. It's only got 16 gigs of RAM, which is enough for some, but I do a lot of video editing and I wanna have a little bit more RAM just to kind of work with. A 6060 Ti in 2024 isn't the most powerful GPU, but it will do what I need to get done for video editing and a few other projects. I'm not gonna be gaming on this PC pretty much at all, so I'm not really too worried about my GPU strength like that. I do do hardware encoding when I'm rendering my videos, or I'm sorry, exporting. Every time I say render, I think about when I used to do Sony Vegas. When I export my videos, I do do a lot of hardware encoding just because it's faster. I still get to transfer all my work files over to the computer. I actually just did a fresh reinstall of Windows 10 on the SSDs. I did get a new SSD for it. It was an NVM two terabyte SSD. Prior to me doing this rebuild, I had reset the entire PC, wiped the drives, transferred everything that was important over. I had did that in hopes of fixing some of the Wi-Fi issues I was having with the computer, or not even just Wi-Fi, internet issues in general. But ultimately, I think the network card on the old motherboard was dying, so there wasn't really much I could do about that, but that was also a reason why I wanted to make the upgrade. The original build was pretty much useless for any of my day-to-day -day activities. The parts were significantly outdated and portions of the motherboard, I'm pretty certain, were dying, actually. The only problem I have with this case is it's a little too tight for this motherboard and the cooler that I use, which is a Dark Rock 4, I can't fit like a, an additional fan on the top portion of my, my case, basically. Just because there's no room. There's literally no room for it. All the cables and stuff are kind of getting in the way which makes it impossible to stick a fan up there in the correct way. I don't know how I did it on my main gaming rig, because to be honest, they're basically the same thing minus the GPU CPU combination and the PSU is different on both of the machines. I don't remember what the PSU is in my gaming rig and I don't remember what the PSU is in my work computer. I didn't swap that out. That was actually a brand new PSU I put in there, um, I think about a year or two ago. It works fine with the motherboard that I have and for the stuff that we're gonna be doing, the GPU isn't that power hungry. When I got my 4070 for my gaming rig though, I did have to buy a brand new PSU. PSU. I think it's like an MSI branded PSU. I don't really remember what the name of it is, but I've got the box in the closet. I got a brand new desk for it. I got a brand new keyboard for it. And I got an additional monitor to be mounted onto the desk to go right next to my 34 inch ultra wide LG monitor that I was initially using for gaming and work on my gaming PC. But if you've played with an ultra wide monitor and you do gaming, you know for a fact that Ultra wide monitors suck for gaming. They're way too big. They mess with the aspect ratios of some of your games. I couldn't even adjust certain games to fit the aspect ratios that I wanted to. It, it was a mess. So I opted out and got this Acer Nitro 240 Hertz 1440p monitor, strictly pretty much for gaming. I play a lot of Call of Duty. I want to play it in 1440p. I want to play it with as high of a refresh rate as I can afford. You know, a higher refresh rate will make the gameplay feel and look a lot smoother. So I just opted out for that and it's honestly been a miracle for my gameplay. I feel so much more comfortable in this monitor. I can't even go back to 1080p now. It doesn't feel even remotely as good. The desk is overall really nice. I don't know what brand it is. I'll just post a picture of it on my screen. It was something I got off of Amazon for like a hundred bucks and it actually turned out really, really nice. It's a standing desk. Both of my desks in my own office are standing desks. I want to have that versatility if I'm feeling a little uncomfortable from sitting all day because sitting all day, as we all know, is not good for your back, to be honest. You shouldn't do it. You shouldn't sit all day. You're going to feel unhealthy. You're going to feel sluggish. You're going to feel like trash. I wanted to get something that would help 
mitigate that kind of. Now standing all day also isn't good for you either, but it's good for your blood flow. You can stretch, you can walk around, you can do things. It, it, it's a necessity. Going back to the build though, I have yet to actually use this properly for work, so I will have to do a little bit of testing, but I'm excited to use it. I've always wanted a separate workstation so I could pretty much dedicate my primary rig to full-time gaming. I have debated on doing a complete factory reset of my gaming rig, get any unnecessary background programs that still might be running on the computer that I'm unaware of, get it all cleaned up, but that's just such a process. I could transfer my app data over to like a hard drive or something and have all of those like favorites and presets for a lot of my different softwares and games already pre-saved. But again, it's just a monumental task. I have been using this computer since 2019. Almost all of the programs on here have remained the same. I've been using it for a very, very, very long time. It's funny looking back on it, I got my gaming PC pretty much a year after the first PC I bought. Now we've come full circle, basically, that first PC I bought has been converted into, like I said, a full-time work PC. It's it's weird how things kind of go in cycle like that. I like kind of recycling certain parts. There was nothing to salvage from that old build, pretty much, aside from the RAM, which again was DDR4. I didn't want to, it's good RAM, I'm gonna use it. But it is fun to be able to upgrade now and be in a position in life where I can afford to upgrade things at a reasonable amount. I didn't spend that much on these changes. The most expensive thing out of doing this whole rebuilding process was getting the motherboard I think in the SSD because the SSD was almost like $200 I think and the motherboard was like 250 but that was it those are the only two expenses that I really really had to keep into consideration when I was making this change and rebuilding the entire PC I also use this as an opportunity to basically redo some of the cable management I'm not showing you that because it still doesn't look as good as I would like it to and it's a hassle to take off the panel and try to keep everything in there but I did take this opportunity to kind of improve on my cable management, and I think it looks a lot better now. The only cable management that doesn't look good is the underdust cable management, which I'm still, look man, I'm, I'm trying to work it out, okay? I'm trying to figure out how I want to do that. It's gonna take some time. And you know what's funny too? When I got my work laptop, I initially bought this, I think Model D, I'm pretty certain this is the Model D mouse. I bought this from uh, Glorious Gaming. I was gonna use this for my travel computer, for my travel laptop, but now it's basically become my full-time mouse at my gaming setup. And I'm absolutely in love with it. It's light, it's airy, it breathes, you don't sweat. One of the best mics I've probably ever used in my gaming career, honestly. For my work PC, I put my Rocat mouse with that computer, which is funny because I still use my Rocat keyboard with my gaming PC. So I've got like a Rocat keyboard on one desk and a Rocat mouse on the other. The mouse on my work computer is black and the keyboard is white. <laughs> The mouse on my gaming PC is white and my keyboard is black. I don't really know what I'm doing, but it, it looks good, so hey, man. I also got a mouse bungee that I was going to put with the work PC, but I ended up swapping it to my gaming rig and putting my Cloud9 Makai mouse bungee with the work PC. I think it just fits the aesthetic better for some weird reason. It was taking up a little too much space on my main rig and I've been trying to slowly optimize the way my rig is set up on my desk. Like my whole setup is good for the most part, but I'm trying to eliminate just bulky things kind of being in the way or just looking a little out of place. I ended up getting a glorious gaming mouse bungee. Shout out glorious gaming. I'm a big fan of your products. So if you ever want to talk, let me know. Same with Elgato. I got a lot of Elgato glorious gaming products now. We're, we're cooking with these products. I've got a lot of plans for the setup. I can't wait to actually use it in its fullest. Uh, once I get a chance to actually really, really use it, I'll make a report back and tell you guys kind of how things are going. But it's been kind of fun just building things again. This is the second PC I've ever built because I had to rebuild the whole thing. And I use it as an opportunity to learn more about PC building, understanding what certain slots on the motherboard do, what certain cables do that I wasn't using properly in my first build, which by the way, I need to go take a good look at because I'm pretty certain there are a couple of things that are still disconnected in my gaming rig that I'm not using correctly because at the time of me building it, I didn't really know what I was doing. Like I did, but I did it. I had a friend help me over Discord, but it was still my first time building a, a PC. So there's still a lot about it that I still need to learn, but I had a lot of fun rebuilding this computer. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like on and subscribe to the channel for more gaming content. And as always, this has been Jay the Gamer. I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you have a great day.